distribution channel traps and how to spot them, how to avoid them. That's what we're talking about this week, coming right up. So welcome to the channel and welcome back to the channel if you're a regular viewer. Now, if you're new to the channel, I have a request because we are very, very close to a subscriber milestone, uh, which is 55,000 subscribers. So if you're not subscribed, please do hit that subscribe button. And if you're new to the channel, you will see something really cool happen when we hit 55,000. We, we love to kind of celebrate these milestones. But anyway, back to the topic, distribution networks. Um, and again, if you're new to the channel, um, what I try to share on the channel here is a lot of stuff that I'm seeing day to day in my consulting business. So I've been running a consulting business for the last 25 years called Logistics Bureau. Um, and that's really handy because it kind of keeps me up to date with all the things that are happening in supply chain across all different industries. Um, and I can share some of these tips obviously on this channel. So what have I been seeing a lot of over the last couple of years? Changes to distribution channels. Um, not always for good. Um, it causes a lot of angst in the supply chain and it can cause a lot of uh, customer service issues and a lot of cost issues. So let's talk about those changes in distribution channels, why they might be happening, how to spot them, uh, and what you can do about it. Okay, so first of all, we're seeing, and, and look, this is not news, but we're seeing massive changes to distribution channels, obviously, particularly during the pandemic with a lot more home deliveries, a lot more uh, direct to business deliveries. And that has really quite significantly changed a lot of distribution networks because whereas perhaps before they were delivering uh, in truckloads or pallet loads and so on, it's now much smaller orders and we all know what that does to distribution costs, the unit costs go up. So you really have to monitor that very, very carefully. Uh, a lot of companies are now getting on into uh, online ordering more than they were in the past. I mean, it's not a new thing, but for a lot of businesses, it's a relatively new thing. Uh, and of course now, you know, omni-channel has been bandied around for a few years, but most businesses really are taking an omni-channel approach now where they have to have multiple channels to market. And, and so what does that mean for us as supply chain managers? We've really got to watch very, very closely each of those channels in terms of the volumes per channel, the order sizes per channel, and that can vary significantly, and the service levels offered by each channel. And of course, what that does, it puts increasing pressure on our supply chain for flexibility um, and the ability to, to quickly change to the service needs of these different channels. So, and I know I keep talking about it, but cost to serve is the way to actually monitor the performance of these just, just these different distribution channels uh, and see where you might be leaking some profit. And I'll, I'll share some resources at the end for you to help you with that. One thing though, we haven't talked a lot about, I don't think on the channel, and, and I don't know whether you've thought about it a lot, do comment down below if you have, but it's the flip side of that. It's not the outbound distribution to customers that we need to monitor in terms of channel and order size and so on, it's the inbound as well. Uh, and why is that so important? Well, we're seeing changes in sourcing, uh, you know, tra traditionally, so many businesses have sourced, for example, from China and, and are now sourcing from other countries. We're seeing that uh, certainly within our client base here at Logistics Bureau. Uh, they're, they're looking further afield, not necessarily to take all of their sourcing out of China, but to have a, a good solid plan B. Um, but I, I, to be honest, over time, I, I think sourcing out of China is going to gradually reduce um, because of the uncertainty that we've been seeing over the last couple of years. Um, also, of course, what companies are doing is monitoring now that inbound shipment. So we talk a lot on the channel about cost to serve, but, but let's just flip that for a minute and talk about cost to supply. So traditionally, we have you know, used ocean freight. We've been um, resupplying in very large quantities around the world. Um, that has changed a little bit in recent years. Sometimes we need a, a, little, a lot more agility and the ability to replenish quicker. Um, but also we're seeing some of those inbound channels change. So just think for a minute uh, around strategy, strategies like drop ship. So let's say, for example, you might be sourcing some product out of China and traditionally you've been bringing it through to your major warehouse. I'm here in Australia. 
We've been bringing it into our warehouse in Australia and then distributing it out to our customers. Um, it could make sense to actually have some of that delivery conducted directly out of a warehouse uh, from our supplier in China directly to our customer here in Australia. So that there's an opportunity to skip certain nodes uh, in our supply network and that's happening a lot more as well. So what does that mean? It's not just about looking at our cost of supply. So remember we've got cost of serve generally is thought of as outbound. We, need, we can also be now looking at our cost of supply, we should be. Um, but we also need to think about not just the service and cost impact, but the impact on our remaining supply chain network. So let's say for example, um, we're, we're a big company, we're importing a lot of product from China, but now we're gonna start drop shipping some direct to customers. That's great, you know, it's probably, it may, if you've done the numbers correctly, have some cost uh, and, and service benefits. But what does it do to your network here in Australia? Because you've now got less product coming through that network. Hmm, that's gonna possibly increase the cost per unit through that existing network. So, you know, it's a little bit like keeping all the ping pong balls underwater, isn't it? Or, or spinning plates on, on sticks. You've really got to appreciate the implications of a change of strategy here on the, on the uh, cost and service here. So we might change a sourcing strategy, uh, so maybe doing more dropship, but what's the impact on our existing distribution network? So just a little bit of thought there and sort of flipping cost to serve on its head for a moment. Um, a lot of people are going through these challenges at the moment. So look, if you need some help on your own distribution network, by all means, uh, call out to me. My contact details are generally down below the video. Uh, but I'd be very interested in what changes you're seeing, not just in your distribution network, but in your inbound supply networks. Do comment down below and we can have a little bit of a discussion there and then maybe do some follow-up videos on those topics as well. But I promised you some more resources. So uh, what I'll do also is put some links in the description. So look in the description below the video uh, for a lot of relevant videos that we already have on the channel about you know, uh, distribution networks generally and sourcing and so on that will help you out. So a little bit of a spin on cost to serve this week. Not just, don't think of it just in terms of cost to serve, but cost to supply as well. So thanks for watching. And if you're not subscribed, don't forget, do that because we're going to hit a milestone very, very soon, 55,000 subscribers. So thanks for watching and see you next week.